Well, good morning, good afternoon, and thank you for being here with us today. This is an IAI workshop, and we also have the support of Latin America 21. Uh, we're going to work on social media, how to encourage reaction in global change. Here we have Pablo Montaño from Mexico. He's a political scientist, uh, graduated from the ETSON. He has a master's degree in environmental and sustainable development awarded by the University of London College. He currently coordinates Conexiones Climáticas, an organization that works with cl uh, climate crisis communication. He's also a producer and scriptwriter of the documentary series, El Tema or The Topic. He has ta taught political ecology and forms of organization to face the climate crisis. Thank you so much, Pablo, for being here today. We know your time is really valuable. And we are very happy to uh, spend uh, this day with you. Remember that there will be some interaction. So if you're connecting by phone, please try and switch to your laptop. So thank you, Pablo, and please go ahead. Thank you, Irene, and to the entire IAI team for making this possible. I am very excited. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes, that's okay. Well, just a second, I have to cough. <laughs> La, la intención que tenemos con el seminario de hoy, el taller. El objetivo de este workshop, como Irene ha dicho, es crear un interactivo para tener una charla y compartir algunos de los elementos clave cuando se trata de postear en social media. Como saben, ahora estoy trabajando con la comunicación climática y trabajamos con organizaciones que están lanzando campañas that uh, create uh, partnerships with the academic sector as well. At some point, I worked at a research center as part of a liaison team with research in Mexico. And, uh, you know, I've, I've done my share of trial and error as an activist regarding social media, how to use them, how to, you know, stop considering them a myth because some people think that everything has to happen on social media, but that's not the case, okay? I'm not, I'm not uh, promoting social media as a panacea, but they are, they are indeed very valid mechanisms to, you know, understand, talk to each other and connect with each other. I've been talking to Irene Jeronimo and the IEI team, so we came up with the, the idea of this workshop. I'm just remembering that I need to speak a bit faster so that our, our colleague interpreters don't hate me, sorry. Um, okay, so how do we use the social media as a tool to motivate action and reaction from our fields of knowledge? This is a structure of the session. First of all, I would like to talk about each social media profile. What, which one, what for, advantages, disadvantages, specificities. If you have any question at any point, please you know, raise your hand or unmute your mic and please ask me any questions you may have or, or make comments. And also we need to remember what we're more interested in, the likes, uh, the number of likes, the views, if we want to reach, I don't know how many people, or if we want to create a community because that's different. And then we have, you know, minimum requirements. You know, these are some lessons I have learned um, after, you know, 15 years that I've been working as an activist and using social media as a tool. We will be doing an activity on Miro, which is a visual platform in order to test how we can apply what we are now discussing. Finally, uh, we have implemented some strategies, okay, and then we will say what we have, share what we have developed. I have selected just a few, two tools which I feel are um, closer to the type of work you're doing, as I have uh, discussed with the IAI, and I think they can be useful. Okay, let's begin. Meet your poison. Social media, as I was saying, have been very useful, but they have also distorted reality. And right now we are at a time where we, where we need to analyze them carefully. We need to be critical 
to see what they are creating. I would like to focus on some social media because there's so many of them. And I, I make this selection, including the social media that I feel might be more useful for academic work. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. These are the ones I know the most, to be honest. And also they have the largest number of users. Facebook remains the main uh, platform. You know, you know, it was the first uh, social media created as such where you have you can have interaction without you know leaving the website and that's crazy i don't know if you remember when the internet was created we used to surf and we would go from one website to the other from one link to the other then we would get viruses on the on the computer and stuff like that social media have actually you know concentrated digital traffic you know they have the content it's basically these social media they have the highest um, portion and Facebook, uh, for instance, in some countries, they have thought about making internet internet available to everyone um, because and they might become reference um, for the internet. Um, it's like the, the, the line that divides the internet and Facebook might not be clear because people can do everything on Facebook now, you know, uh, buy, have the website, etc. So Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok, and Twitter. Have a look at this at these figures. There is uh, high social media penetration. South America, seventy nine percent. Central America, seventy three percent. North America, eighty two percent. Of course, we can also say that you know, in the social media, we can find large audiences. And we would will be working with a lot of people. Luis Armando is uh, saying something. Yes, Luis Armando, I'm going to make like a general introduction so that we know what we're talking about. Um, so this is a place where we can find potential readers, as well as people that can connect to our information, our research. You know, sometimes we we feel that this is a special place. We need to see how we can find the people. Some figures in in English. Okay, this is percentage of active users. Okay, the first uh, graph shows us the the population that are connected, but also we need to know why they are they are online. Uh, because this uh, shows us what we're going to face and how hard is it going to be for our research, for our courses to really find users. 54%, let's have a look at Facebook. 54% enter Facebook because they, they're looking for funny or entertaining, entertaining content. 54% because they're following or researching brands and products. You know, they want to know if a, if a product is good or not. 59% because they want to keep up to date with the news and the current events. That figure is very important. 71% use Facebook to message friends and family. 64% use Facebook to share photos or videos. So they create content. And that's uh, uh, something peculiar about social media. Unlike websites or, or content creation as we knew it before, um, for instance, when we access a, a given um, news portal, for instance, the content is already there. The content is there waiting for us. Um, but actually, on the social media, we are content creators. You know, users create the content. So you upload uh, photos or videos on Facebook you know your family your your picnic day and the same goes for instagram you know you create stories you upload photographs etc and on twitter you're also writing the messages so this is a collaborative uh, creation of the the platform experience 
Of course, not everything depends on users. Platforms have this, you know, ghost <laughs> uh, called the algorithm. People say, oh, the Facebook algorithm does that, the, the Instagram algorithm does this. And, you know, the algorithm is a number of rules that the platform uses to determine what is uh, uh, viewed the most or the least. Platforms are, these platforms are not fully democratic, okay? And these I will expand on now. I know that you might know some of these platforms, but I would like to um, analyze them one by one. Facebook. Well, the user creates uh, the profile and they start having followers and friends. Facebook recommends you, uh, friends like your Irene's friend, Irene went to school with you, and Irene has these other friends. So you start creating a close circle, a circle of friends uh, that is close to your, your real life, let's say. That's why you have your friends, your family, whatever. Now they have the follower function. So even if someone it does not belong to your close uh, group of friends or family, uh, they can still follow you and see some of your posts. Advantages. Um, I'm going to show you the, the platform so that you can see it. First of all, it promotes a community space. I The people know me, so there is already some sort of kinship. And I'm sure they're interested in my content or some of my content in any case. It includes different modalities. It's not just an interface and one single platform. There are groups. So uh, for instance, I can read what my friends are saying. There can be a number of people who do um, mountain uh, bike activities or uh, I may be part of a, a group of biologists and we discuss biology stuff uh, and they are all in a certain region. So that's groups. We can also have pages. The pages are like the, uh, the main um, cover of some events, for instance. Um, also, the, there are opportunity, sale opportunities, etc. These are great for, I don't know, alumni of a given school, colleagues. Um, if we wanted to organize ourselves as a group, then Facebook would have the best um, uh, platform because WhatsApp can also work like this. And it already now belongs to Facebook Meta. Uh, we will be talking about a concept called pauta in Spanish, meaning, you know, the payment, because you can post something on, on Facebook and you pay Facebook so that it shows your, your posting to people. The thing is that Facebook can have a, a highly focused um, system, and that is better than other platforms. For instance, you can say that this content should be seen by men aged between 50 and 60. They must like pets and they uh, post about politics or something like that. And Facebook can give you, you know, this uh, group of people as an audience, and it, it, does, it does it very, very efficiently. Disadvantages. Uh, it's unlikely for a, a Facebook post to become viral. What's a viral content? It means that it was so amazing. It doesn't necessarily need to be good. It can be really bad, but people liked it for some reason and started sharing it massively. And now the creator does not control this reality any longer. You know, it's like it, it, it's been shared and reshared and people keep using it. We will be talking about some content that we did see viral content uh, globally. But it's very uh, unusual for this to happen on Facebook. Things uh, posting do, don't go viral because of the algorithm. Because the algorithm says, oh, OK, I want people to pay me. So I'm going to show the contents that someone has paid for. So it becomes very difficult for organic, organic content without payment uh, to become viral. 
So what we have seen, for instance, when those of us who work with social media on campaigns, we don't work with Facebook so much because unless you pay them, it will be very hard for your content to, to be broadly disseminated. Also, uh, uh, Facebook native content is prioritized. For instance, you post uh, a video on Facebook and the Facebook is hosted on Facebook, not on YouTube or, or another website. You know, the you uploaded the video uh, on Facebook, so it will be shown. But if you just paste a link, same content, same person, if you paste a link to YouTube, for instance, so this is a video hosted elsewhere, Facebook won't show it, or it would show it less. Why? Because Facebook is saying, okay, I want people to stay here. I don't want people, I want people to see the content in my flat platform. I don't want to send people to YouTube, Twitter, or your internet research website. For example, uh, you can upload documents to Facebook. So there's a difference between a, a document that is hosted in Facebook and some or somewhere else. Facebook will prefer the one that is hosted on Facebook. What we do in Mexico in this organization, I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. We wanted to create a, a community that was fast paced um, in Facebook. This is uh, there are people who are losing their homes with the rising levels of the sea. And so we needed to bring attention from the media to the, what is happening to them. So we created this page in Facebook and about uh, within a week, they had um, many, uh, they had over 250 followers and more than 100 likes. I'm going to show you the page, the community page. This is in Facebook and you can pin um, sort of uh, some specific messages to bring attention to them. This is a video where the community asks for help being relocated. We already has, have some work showing um, what the houses that were lost overnight. This is very dramatic, what is happening here. And so what social media can do for you in these cases is that you exist on the internet. Before this, they didn't exist. They, there wasn't an official point to go to, for example, for an interview. So aside from showing this, this provided this uh, existence. And uh, I'm going to go back so that we don't get too deep into that. And we can, I can show you more examples. Um, one recommendation that is something that we have discovered is that one post a day uh, is something you should do to stay relevant with the algorithm. If you stop posting, Facebook reads that as um, you not being active. And so when you go back to posting, uh, it's not going to reach all of your followers. It's not going to show that to all of your followers. That is very important. Social media don't fulfill that promise of that if I have, for example, 40,000 followers, everyone is going to, to see my posts. Um, so because the goal for them is to keep people in their, in their platform, they choose and they are, have become aware of what they need to choose to keep you there. If you, it's very different from country to country, which platform is more used. For example, in Mexico, what is happening is that young people are leaving Facebook and are moving towards others like TikTok and Instagram. But Facebook, it's still very relevant because the demographics, um, people over 40 are reaching Facebook for the first time. So there are specificities that we need to take into account uh, depending on who we want to reach. If I want to reach older people, perhaps I will, I'm gonna choose Facebook. Uh, 
in Mexico, uh, in some rural areas, Facebook is the only one that is there. Um, then the other ones, for example, why didn't we do an Instagram page for this community? Well, nobody uses it there. So it, it was beside the point. So Facebook is still the one that has the highest reach, uh, but for some audiences, uh, at least in Mexico, it doesn't work, but um, it, that varies from place to place in the US, in Europe, I know it's still relevant with young people. Next, Instagram. Instagram is the land of influencers, right? And uh, influencer is uh, someone who is uploading content to change the, the behavior of the people who follow them. So for example, someone who is promoting beauty tips for people to use certain cosmetics and look a certain way, or people who share workouts and workout routines and, and you follow them. I, I follow them, perhaps I, I don't do the workout, but, but it's comforting to see someone working out sometimes. And unlike Facebook, um, because in Facebook you had friends. Uh, so in Instagram, if you have an open account, you create an audience of followers, people who want to consume what you are doing. For example, if you're a biologist, I may want to follow you because I like the pictures of your work because I find it fascinating. Or because you uh, post reflections on the work you're doing and I think that that's something I want to read. So I can curate who I follow. It's a platform for visual content for photographs and short videos, that is good. It has good quality. It allows you to share short messages in stories. Instagram doesn't just have, it has different modalities and, and ways of posting messages. It has some tools to edit your pictures. It, they're very easy to use. And it, there are also transitions and lives for example, I can arrange to hang out with Irene and Irene from her account and I can uh, log on from my account um, and then we can post jointly. And what happens with this is, for example, I don't have many followers, but I just did a, a research and Irene finds it interesting and wants to share it to her followers. So they can, uh, we can post together and, and we can break a barrier. It's a, it's a nice shortcut um, for us to reach a larger audience when we don't have a, a large audience initially. So that is something you can do. It is a, a, some of the disadvantages going back to the, what uh, do people join Instagram for? Well, people uh, go there to find entertainment or funny things or to share entertaining or funny things. Uh, so there are not a lot of people who are looking for, I don't know, the new updates in geophysics. Um, people are looking to share their vacation pictures and, and memes. So the predisposition is perhaps more superficial. There's, of course, a, a lot of uh, followers that are bought so that, that you can artificially create a large audience and it gives priority to audiovisual content. What is going to show more in this platform is video. That is something that Facebook is also doing. Twitter is also doing it. They're prioritizing video postings. Um, over pictures. And how, how have we used it, uh, what we have done with Instagram? This thing that, that I'm showing you here, uh, we crossed our, our platforms. I don't know if you know her, Barbara Mori. She told us she wanted to do something about climate change. She's a Mexican actress, if you uh, are not familiar. With, with Mexican telenovelas. And this is an, uh, 
this is someone from academia from Monterrey. And so Barbara told us, I want to do something about climate change and, and the environment. And she has, I think, several million followers in Instagram. So we asked her, how about you invite the candidates for government for for governor in one of the biggest states of Mexico and we have someone from academia to question them on climate change and what they intend to do so she um, so there was uh, this was a way to sort of build a trap for these candidates because it was very hard to resist to, to appear in a platform the, with someone who has millions uh, of followers. And the result is a video, uh, I'm not gonna play it now, but it has millions of views. And something which our friend from academia, from the university, even if she had attempted or written open letters, she had, would have never reached such a large number of people. And um, so the governor uh, was uh, kind of cornered and also because it was so public, she sort of had to commit to, to those measures. So this is also useful to, to explain to a large audience. Another advantage, uh, well, combining audiences, uh, which this is, is great because you can take advantage of a platform from someone else who has millions of million followers. And there's also large uh, affinity and receptiveness because people curate their following a lot. So because I, I come to Instagram to relax, I'm not gonna follow anyone who annoys me. So uh, I'm gonna follow people I like and, and things that they like as well. So there's large affinity and receptiveness in your followers as well. That is something we found. People were uh, loving this actress and being very praiseful to her, but they were also listening carefully to what uh, this uh, researcher from university was saying. Um, sorry, uh, I didn't, I forgot to change the title here, but it, this is TikTok, not Instagram. This is the largest growing platform. Um, don't worry if you're not familiar with it. It's not for you, perhaps. It's not for me. It's uh, for people under 18, mostly, uh, that, that the algorithm is created for. And it's a video platform. And what you do is you swipe up and, and you have another video and then you have another video and they're short, um, no more than a few minutes videos. And it has high potential for virality. The number of views in other platforms, for example, YouTube, there's no comparison uh, of, between what you can do with one or the other. You can have a TikTok with million views in 48 hours, even if you're not famous, if it's cute or funny or sexy video, you're gonna reach million views. And you have tools to create videos and the algorithm learns really quickly about what you like. And it's a bit um, worrisome because it can read what you like, uh, what you like and, and where you spend more time. So for example, it will show you a football video, for example, the best uh, dribbles uh, that Ronaldinho has done. And so then it will try something else, some free kicks by Messi. So even if you didn't like the, the previous video with football, it learned because you watched it, it learned that you like that. And its biggest purpose is to catch your attention. I don't know how it is in, in your countries. If you have teenagers at home, you're probably dealing with it, but especially the, the audience is, is Captive, it has a captive audience among teenagers. It's the fastest growing right now. It's expected to grow beyond the, the other ones. And some disadvantages, this is something that a lot of people will say and something I'm 
um, listening a lot. Um, people are saying, oh, no, just don't don't go on, on Twitter, don't go on Instagram, just go on TikTok. And yeah, sure. But if you're watching a video and um, you're practicing and you see a video of a bombing in Ukraine, following by a video of a woman dancing in, in a song, then you watch a video of a Biden announcing something. And, and this is uh, actual videos that I have seen uh, scrolling. So it's it's a, a lot of information. And, and so your attention uh, span is not um, very good for that. So you had a millions of views, but uh, what's the quality of those views? Perhaps if you're selling potato chips, uh, you, you you don't need more than people watching you for a few seconds. But if you want to leave a message, you want to guide a conversation, well, then it's hard. Um, I think it's difficult for, for TikTok to be the platform for that. Perhaps you were a big hit and you got millions of views, but that doesn't mean you're going to create a community that you're going to retain their attention. People on, on, on TikTok, I think they're, they're the ones that of, they they're the ones that will they'll not pity follow you. They're just if you don't entertain me, I'm moving on. And this is what I was telling you to look at something uh, entertaining or funny. 78 percent so i just uh, yeah just to to turn the brain to mush you know if someone tells you oh we need to do a TikTok," well think of it carefully it, it doesn't mean you don't you can't or you shouldn't but sometimes uh, when starting a project we open pages in in facebook TikTok, twitter and and we're managing all these social media and we don't know why what for so what we have done is, for example, it's helpful for alerting about an event that can cause reactions. So people will watch for a few seconds. And we did this campaign with some young people, 17 year olds in Tabasco, to raise awareness about the salinity, sal the salt content in the soil. And they were happy because they uh, reached 50, more than 50,000 views. Uh, they're from a small community, so they were super excited. And so creating for, for creating awareness among young people uh, about an initiative that is really helpful as well. Oh, you can hear it? Oh, you can watch it now. Yeah, you can see this is the video that they, they uploaded it's very visual and they're telling uh, on voiceover what what's happening in their community it's a 58 second video and they show you the different species that are dying off so this is uh, of course something that has pull in in tiktok um, and it, it has gotten a good number of comments. So what happened afterwards? Well, there wasn't um, a lot of, of reception uh, for, for the rest of the different pieces of content that they generated. So um, there's no silver bullet for social media. You need to select carefully what you need uh, and for what. If you have doubts, you can start writing that in the chat or we'll have time for, for questions later. And now we go to my thing. This is um, my space. The thing about Twitter is you create it. Um, for example, TikTok throws you in a universe of video. Unlike that, in Twitter, you curate your own space. You follow people, and then if you don't want to follow people, you can silence them. If you don't want to uh, see people sharing their content even, there's a great potential for, for virality. It's designed to, to for things to go viral despite the number of followers. 
Something is uh, that they haven't improved is that there's high political and media tension, at least in the US. Uh, it happens in Mexico as well. I don't know if the rest of, of Latin America, but we have politicians usually have their accounts. Um, sometimes they're uh, posting themselves. So if I post something to the governor of Jalisco, and they're going to read it. I, I, they might have someone else managing their accounts, but sometimes they do that themselves. And it also allows for open navigation. For example, I can go into Irene's account, even if we don't know each other, and I can look at what she posts. And that doesn't happen in, in other platforms. In Instagram, for example, I can close my account and I can authorize who sees it. So I can see that Irene has just shared an article on politics and even not knowing her, I can go, oh, I can comment, you're so wrong. And so we can have an argument or a dialogue. And so it's, it's a platform that tends towards conflict and uh, it's there's an opportunity for confrontation and for a conversation. So for activists, it's very important. And you can also create uh, content communities, the hashtags, for example, uh, that is a way where you can uh, hashtag climate change. And if you click on that, you can see everything connected to climate change. Disadvantages, uh, mainly its new administration. There is high uncertainty about its future. You know, this platform platform doesn't have so many users. Let us go back to the figures. You know, have a look at the word Twitter is. And this is weird because Twitter is part, you know, of the public agenda. You have the mass media, the authorities, and we all decided to, you know, to go to Twitter and fight each other or, or discuss, but they don't have so many followers. What is future used for? Well, to keep up to date with news and current events. So nobody, you know, reads Twitter for fun. It's more toxic than fun. Or and to talk to your family, of course not. Okay, I, I'm not. Got, I'm not following my my aunt on on Twitter, but but I do want to keep up to date with news. Many people don't read newspapers anymore. They read, you know, newspaper feeds uh, on Twitter. But now it is facing an, an uh, uncertainty. Elon Musk bought the platform, $44 billion, and he's taking, you know, some bold decisions. I don't really like the guy, by, but still, uh, for instance, he fired many Twitter employees. So there are some engineering issues now with the platform. And we don't know which decisions are going to be made. Um, also, many of the policies that are making Twitter less toxic, less fight-oriented, and less misinformation-oriented are now being eliminated. For instance, uh, we, you couldn't uh, disseminate fake information about COVID. That was a restriction, but now the restriction has been removed. Many accounts that had been removed because of misinformation are now being restored, and people are recovering their accounts. As this is an open platform, uh, also there is quite a lot of uh, aggression towards each other. And this is also very interesting, who is saying and what they're saying. I took the news from Aristegui Noticias. Carmen Aristegui is a journalist that has her own news journal, and she publishes the Mayan train will be launched in 2023, and she's announcing, announcing the pillar building plan within this mega project. And this is this is my uh, my article. She has 9.8 million um, followers. I have 28,000. She had 508 likes, and it was retweeted by 136 people. And with a minimum number of followers, you know, I had 1,100 retweets and 2,500 uh, likes. Why? Because of the use of hashtags, etc. And, and it's the same piece of news. And they also, uh, they pasted a, a link 
outside Twitter and I just posted a, a, a photograph. Why? And the people, the people having a look at my post won't have to leave Twitter. But have a look at the number of followers she has, 9.8 million. So we will find, uh, oh, sorry, it was uh, the, the, the comments are a bit strange. News portals ha include very limited interaction with, uh, with their articles. You know, very few news portals have many likes or retweets. Why? Because people try to, you know, um, strike a connection with other people and they follow other people and their content. Uh, the, this is actually an excellent option for academics. There are main, many communities in Mexico and the United States where you can create these threads where you share your explanation. And this is quite a long thread. Let's have a look at the final tweets. This is an environment and climate researcher. She talks about, she's providing her arguments against another academician they're talking about an article another article why it's right or wrong and this is a twitter thread twitter you know has this limitation you can use 280 characters to write a message and that's that but of course you can write a thread so that's point one two three four and you tell a story and you can add images or videos to complement what you're saying Multimedia, ¿no? o sea, te, si tú metes además imágenes. Uh, actually, Twitter uh, allows for the you and awards the uh, rewards the use of uh, multimedia. You can include images, of course, and actually this means that the audience will be larger. I can share this uh, even if people don't follow Jacqueline, they will start reading about what she's saying. Okay, and that's a huge advantage. And also, it doesn't punish users that have very few followers. That's not a problem. Uh, they will still show you uh, good content or relevant content. Um, uncertain future. Elon Musk has tweeted this, and he wrote, uh, follow and a rabbit. This tweet was shared at the beginning of QAnon, which is this group that uh, has this conspiracy theory. Um, it supported Donald Trump. It has ties with ultra-right movements. And this makes us very uncertain that, you know, that the platform owner is now telling his 120 million followers that they should start following a platform that has been known to you know spread rumors and conspiracy theories and this massive entry of um, fake news and you know conspiracy theories is might be a problem because uh, I, we enjoy twitter and we don't know what's going on nowadays luis Hernando is talking about hgmo issues and if they're censored or not this is not happening Twitter. These topics are indeed debated. In some platforms, for instance, YouTube, uh, if you upload a video saying that climate change does not exist or something like that, um, we, we have to see what happens. And on Twitter, Twitter, if you wrote a fake comment about climate change, they would tell you something like, this is not true. Uh, you need to learn about climate change here, and they would include uh, a link for you to study this. Uh, you're asking about junk food and stuff like that. Yes, the, these topics can be discussed uh, uh, regarding uh, GMOs, transgenic um, foods, etc. All of this is allowed. They're, they're not censored as topics. Uh, yes, Elon Musk is criticizing the scientific community as they have actually aided science dissemination. Now they they feel they're being under supervision. 
I, I, of course, I've met many people in Twitter. I have set of projects on Twitter, and I'm sure this conference um, started from Twitter. Uh, maybe you're following me or something like that. And there's a similar platform called Mastodon. It has a nice collaboration uh, platform. It's just like four of us there or something like that. So we haven't fought yet. There are constructive conversations and there are followers according to interests. You need to subscribe to a specific server. I subscribe and they ask me, do you want to belong to a which group of interests? Journalism, Latin America, science, climate justice. Um, then you have uh, you are there with all the people that are talking about climate justice. Disadvantage: very few users. The interface is really complicated. Okay, if you find other social media difficult, just wait for this to to develop because now it's not easy to use, and also very few users. Okay. Uh, I think if you go to the to the square um, near your home, you will find more people. They asked me about LinkedIn. Um, sorry, haven't include. I haven't included it in today's presentation. Sorry, but it might be a good platform platform uh, when it comes to posts and professional issues. Sorry, it slipped my mind. That that's a reason. But we can also talk about LinkedIn in future. LinkedIn focuses on, you know, uh, the professional sphere. And I can, I can just briefly talk about LinkedIn. In LinkedIn, everyone wears a tie. What do I mean by that? Well, people are more formal. If we want to have debates, share articles constructively, we won't have uh, as much aggressive behavior as, as in other platforms because we're interested in learning and in debating. Have a look at this. Keep up to date with news and current events, 29%. You know, uh, this is not, uh, LinkedIn is not a platform that is very widely used, but people do um, go to LinkedIn to keep up to date with news and current events, not to use with family, not to post videos. The idea is for other colleagues to see you and to, um, I don't know, training or professional interests to be considered. Sorry, I forgot to include it. Some practical tips. First of all, and foremost, the streets. The social media are a tool for what we want to actually happen outside the social media, okay? We shouldn't just stay in the social media. This is this picture shows this, you know, the construction site of the Maya train in Mexico. A number of activists invited illustrate illustrators uh, from Twitter and Instagram, and they invited them to, you know, draw something about the Mayan train. Okay, so we organized a, a Zoom meeting. We invited these artists and also ac academicians, biologists, activists, so they would ex explain what's ha happening uh, right there. And they explained what was happening, who is being affected, who is losing, why this is serious. And they explained this to content creators, in this case, um, artists. And they actually, you know, created these images. Uh, they, in other images, they used, you know, native species in their drawings. They talk about the, the complication of the type of soil at the Yucatan Peninsula. So the acad academicians and scientists provided the illustrators the basis so they would create this content. And then, of course, they were shared on the social media, but they were printed um, as stickers and posters. So the social media helped create content that ended up in the hands of the people protesting in the streets. That's what I mean by that. You know, a social media needs to be a, a, a step towards something. Otherwise, we're asking too much of them. Another tip. Followers are not the be all, end all. I've attended many meetings 
you know, communications meetings, organizations meetings, and they say, how do we get Diego Luna, you know, the actor Garcia Bernal to retweet this? But that's not everything. Maybe Gael, he has 2.4 million followers. Um, he can maybe he retweets your 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 tweet, but that doesn't mean that your content will go viral. Twenty one likes and five retweets regarding this topic. So what happened with two point his two point four million followers? It's his documentary. It's high quality work. You know, it's not enough to have just uh, someone famous. You know. Uh, what didn't happen here were the link, it's an external link. These links, uh, you know, take you outside the platform. What else failed? Well, there's no text. Uh, it says F3, F4, I'm not sure what that is. So I, I, I'm working with them, let's say, but I can already tell them that this is not a good tweet 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 at all um so we need to find a way to get uh, uh tweets to work and to have a high uh, a, a larger audience i would like to know if there are some comments or questions now that we have reviewed the social media maybe there's one that you have doubts about maybe you'd like to have have a look at the, the interface together. The idea is to, um, of course, we, we, we didn't study LinkedIn in depth, sorry about that, but are there any questions or doubts uh, up to now? Is the algorithm issue clear? We can always blame the algorithm in any case, you know? No sé, ¿cómo ven? What do you think? Ah, la, la, la división etaria de Twitter. Yes, Twitter. Twitter and, and age. Twitter has an older audience. You won't find many people under the age of 18, for instance, because that's it, it's more like a young adult audience. Let's say between 25 and 50. And that's the, the typical age, and it's mostly men on Twitter. Uh, uh, we had TweetDeck as well. You could have Facebook and Twitter together. Si no son una agencia, Juan Carlos. Tweet is one of the best. Juan Carlos, if you don't have to post many things at the same time, it's better to curate um, social media specific content. What do I mean by that? Eh, puedes poner, por ejemplo, un, un Some copy. things work great for Facebook, and you can, uh, you know, then paste the, the, you know, the this is the copy, the message, and you can write a longer text in Facebook, for instance, and then it might be positive. Um, uh, and this will help you more than just, you know, post uh, at once on four social media. If you're not managing too many social media, uh, accounts, I would recommend that you work specifically with each account. Okay, so the chat is activated for the panelists to use it now. Uh, what about uh, Twitter and profiles? Okay, yes, that's true. Profile shows you the, the, the tweets performance, your tweets performance, how many people have read it, how many are reading it, you know, those uh, um, analysis data are very useful so that you understand wh which tweets are working in which populations. And you can also buy specific services that, you know, enter uh, or have detailed information about a second layer of statistics. I'm just having a look at the question questions. Nadia says, uh, research gate where we share scientific articles with technical content um, and I use it to share projects with colleagues but it doesn't go beyond the academic world 
Yes, I was I was talking uh, to Irene about this on Monday. I think one of the advantages of the IAI and that you might, uh, you know, how you can harness it. You can harness it because you are a community. You know, there is a common interest and that's very important for Twitter. If there is an IAI community and you follow each other, how many people work at the IAI? Uh, Irene, no, not how many followers, how many researchers? What's your reach? It might be hundreds because there are PhD students, professors, so it's hundreds. That's great, you know, hundreds of followers already creates a very interesting forum. Uh, let me just show you my Twitter which is the network I use the most. And I can, I can give you some tips. Hopefully it will uh, still exist in a few months time and this hasn't been useless. This is uh, my homepage on Twitter. This is me, these are the people I follow. Right now I'm following a lot of football content. This is a journalist, a friend, a colleague from social media, a communicator. And then, you know, I read, and this is a climate researcher from the United States. Uh, Twitter is as fun as you can make it. If I open a Twitter account, you might say, I don't know what I'm reading, I don't know what this is, but actually you are the ones that make up the social media. You decide what, what you are reading. And then you have your profile. The most important thing um, here is uh, who you follow. This is what you have curated. This is what I'm interested in. For example, I found a community in the US that discusses climate change. So I can follow uh, a few members and I can be in on the news about the, the issue. Uh, something I'm going to go in depth as well later, but this is a space um, where you you talk uh, just as you are, um, because that's one different, for example, with LinkedIn. In LinkedIn, I'm going not going to use curse, curse words or things like that. Um, but this is the way I talk in Twitter. The more genuine you are, the more authentic you are, people can see that this isn't a corporate account and they are interested in following that because it's genuine. And so then you can, it can show you uh, accounts that you may be interested in because you follow similar accounts. And here we can see what I have posted. There's also this new space that is communities. For example, I follow one about um, climate movements. These are people I don't know, I don't follow, but we all post about climate change. And there are many different kinds of communities, but and it's a good start. Um, I, I think you, you will be able to find affinity in other things. Um, Juli asks uh, whether is it better to use a newsletter or social media well to share information and it's something i, I was going to go into uh, out afterwards uh, but beyond likes um the important thing is for whoever has to read you to read you and this has to do with this there's no general public uh, so if someone says, oh, I'm doing a campaign, and so who do you, who do you need to, to reach? Well, the public in general, well, there's no such thing. This is, for example, uh, this uh, Simpsons um, thing, old man yells at cloud. Well, well, that would be a general public. But if you want to show your work, um, well, who do you need uh, to see your work? Well, I need young people to, to get to raise awareness and for them to mobilize and ask for change. So if you have a big database that you have obtained uh, it directly, if people have given you their emails, 
or if you have um, a news portal, you have a database from the university that you can use. Uh, that a newsletter in those ca in that case could be a great idea. They have a low rate of, of opening. For example, if you have 10,000 email accounts, then only 1,000 people are going to read it. A 10% opening rate is, is healthy, is good. So 90% of the people you sent it to are going to delete it without reading. And then the number of people who read it and then interact with it, uh, that drops to 2%. So if you send a newsletter uh, with a link to something you just published, um, and if you have a database of 10,000 emails, then you can, if everything goes well, you can expect 200 people to, to reach it. Those are the, the rates that are in, in newsletter uh, services, is like MailChimp is the, the most common one. If your intention, Juli, is uh, something that you want a certain community or a certain demographic to read it, well, Facebook perhaps um, targeted audience. But comments and likes are a metric that because they work for the ones who are selling products, we have sort of adopted that same indicator, but it's not um, perhaps what you need or, or, or the, the most relevant for you. You need uh, people to, to argue, to discuss this. Um, MailChimp um, is, if you don't know newsletters, if you're not familiar, MailChimp is a platform that helps send newsletters and has some uh, predetermined, um, some uh, designs that you can use to design your, your newsletter. One issue that it has is that it has uh, Gmail, Yahoo, Hotmail, uh, when they receive mass email, um, they have filtered that and they probably put it in, in spam. That is why uh, receptiveness um, is very low because many go to, to people's spam um, inbox. Young people between 20 to 45 is, is not a demographic. Uh, university people in Lima who are interested in environmental and ecology issues who are in social media, that is a demographic that, that you can use to work to create a strategy. Because this is this other thing is too abstract. The public in general is, is doesn't exist. Perhaps the, the only one who can say general public it would be FIFA with the World Cup. But um, as long as we're not hosting a World Cup, we, we need to, to focus our attention more. What do you recommend when the same content is shared on different platforms? That's a, that's a good question. For example, if you have a newsletter or um, some sort of communication uh, in Facebook, I would put a link, but I would also put the text. Uh, I would put an attractive title, N not clickbaity, no, not uh, like we're not, are we all gonna die by 2050? Uh, but I would put something that draws attention on, on Facebook. Then on Twitter, perhaps uh, some screenshots uh, of the newsletter to put those as pictures and the link. Why? Because people are not very likely to open the link, but they will read the images. And so we do that a lot with, with communications. Is it worth it to pay to communicate your, your posts? In Facebook and, and Instagram, yes, Meta is good with that, um, with the segmentation. But the thing is, if you pay in Facebook, for example, uh, Facebook 
uh, sort of uh, becomes addicted to, for example, eating it does pay for, for postings. So I, I'm not going to uh, spread anything of hers unless she pays. So if she paid once, it's going to kind of force her to pay always. So what we do with Facebook sometimes is that we we d sort of dump our our page because we we paid once and then we are put in that um, place where you don't reach as many people. But when we pay, it's really good because of the segmentation and because. Um, I'm paying for people, certain people to, to watch my video and, and Facebook does do that. Twitter, for example, is very abstract and it's going to show your posting to everybody and anybody to perhaps you, uh, people who are very strange. Perhaps if you are on Twitter, you see that perhaps you get news from the city government of San Jose in Costa Rica, why? because it doesn't have targeted information. But on Facebook and Instagram, if your strategy is rich, if you need to denounce something terrible that is happening, well, that's good. If you want quality interactions, perhaps a more organic uh, without paying, uh, that would be great. And aside from communicating, you should also think of this. Uh, social media brings projects, friendships, opportunities, movements, romance, perspectives, allies. Um, I don't know if you mentioned it uh, when you introduced me, but I'm also a screenwriter and I'm worked, working on a documentary that, that I am working with Gael Garcia Bernal, the actor, and we met online. He said he liked what I was doing and um, suggested. And so many alliances that, that we have, many partnerships that we have built in the movement have come from social media. I, I have had I, I know people who have, have, have found romance or friendships in social media as well. So um, they are what they are. And we also should have a critical outlook. They are spaces that are mostly controlled by white, uh, rich, uh, wealthy men. But they are spaces that, that they're still valid to be in, but we need to be aware of where we're getting ourselves. And so now let's go into our thing, what, what we can cook here, um, reinventing the narrative. There, there is a fight of narratives in this social media. And for people who work in science, who are researchers, who know their subjects, who can raise awareness and alert us of what is going on, the narratives are very important. The question before sharing someone in, in something in social media is why should it matter to me? For example, a species of a bird or what is happening with a certain fish in the Gulf, in the Cortez Gulf. Why is that important to me uh, living here in, in Mexico City? So. Uh, climate activists usually want um, people to, to not think of anything else other than climate change and the climate crisis. And they want this to be very important and present. And we show graphs and we show pictures and we want to create an impact and people to, to um, be aware of that. But and, and it is important for a lot of people, but it's difficult for people for it to become even more important. So we need to connect them to what is important for them in their lives, their family, their health, their employment, their the nature, sports. So if we build a connection 
we don't need to fight to, to make this important for them. If people understand that their families, the people they love the most, or the land they live in is going to be affected by climate change, then I don't need to discuss more data or tell them when the next glacier is going to melt. They, they can feel that I, I have their attention if, if I can make that connection. And it's very important to, to be respectful, to discuss things respectfully. We're all in different places, in different times in our lives. We don't have the same background. And it's very important to, to start a dialogue with people and, and for them to listen. I'm going to uh, answer uh, a new question. Is there, are there differences in the use of platforms depending on the country? So it, are, am I going to have the same impact on Facebook, TikTok, for example, Mexico, Panama? No, um, you should, uh, you would need to, what we were seeing at the beginning, you need, this is Hootsuite, and we are social, they have a, we are social has data from each country. So they can tell you what is the platform that is used the most uh, in, in your country. Well, so going back, uh, imagining change, um, we need to think of uh, other mo welfare models, uh, something projecting alternatives to the disaster, to bring the conversation beyond disaster. S because we kind of see where the, the solutions are coming from, but if we only focus on, on the disaster, uh, it's too depressing. And this is a, a text uh, that I, th I think is very significant the some characteristics that we need to take into account for our message that has five keys the science um for them for, for it to matter and this is a campaign from the 1800s i don't know if you're familiar but this is an image that was used uh, to campaign against sl slavery and instead of saying uh, as many of us would say, no more slavery. They, instead of that, they appeal um, they, to a different thing. It says, um, I'm not, uh, am I not a man and a brother? So this is good for what we want to do. So to join the community, what we need to do, if I want to discuss people who go to university in Lima, I need to know what they're talking about. Perhaps they're concerned about what is happening in Qatar. Perhaps they're already discussing the oil spill that, that happened in the sea in Peru. So I need to join the conversation and join them where, where they are at. For example, if you go to a party and they're watching a, a, a game from the World Cup and you go, oh, what, what about this Elon Musk guy? Well, they're going to be like, what is he talking about? We're, we're trying to force them to, to come to us. So we, and we also need for information to not feel threatening. So, for example, uh, people, uh, is, if there's someone who likes football and I go and tell them, well, you're watching a, a World Cup that has to do with slavery, so you're complicit in that. And even if that is true, it's upsetting. And so people are, are not going to be open to listen to me. So if I can find a way to make the people I'm talking to not feel accused, um, and to if I also can talk to their values, there's a link uh, from Catherine Hayhoe, who lives in Texas. It's not the best day to, to communicate on climate. And she can tell us, she tells us how she can, has reached ranch owners in Texas to, to discuss climate change, perhaps the worst audience you can imagine. But, but she has, she tells them how the grass is going to suffer, how their cattle is going to be affected. 
Uh, using images or specific language. Images are very easy to, to uh, remember. This is from that same campaign about slavery. This is perhaps the first infographic known in history. And this was used to campaign and to show people the horror of slavery because it, it doesn't say anything. Even if we don't know English, we, we can see that it's people lying down there. And so already you create an, an emotional connection to that. Um, there's a, a turtle with a drinking straw. Uh, I don't. I think everyone has has watched that video of the turtle uh, that that is having a, a drinking straw removed from its nose. Everyone has seen that. It's just um, a turtle suffering uh, from having that removed, and every and we connected to the suffering of, of the turtle this is something in a change in google maps from the visual images in the satellite and the streets to see so that you can see when uh, how the sea level has risen you can see the street from google maps is already underwater and so you don't need to say anything else you have the map and you can see, uh, yes, we're watching your, your presentation. You, you don't see the video? Oh, that's. Oh, sorry. Well, and also to appeal to emotions with intention. We love to put horrible images. There's one from a starving a polar bear, but I ended up not including it. Uh, but what do we want to appeal to? We want people to feel depressed, but why? If we don't know why we're going to make people feel something, then don't do it because emotions are useful and they're useful for people to remember the message. But many times I'm trying to make people cry, but why? We need to have a plan with the emotions that we bring about. And we need to be careful because if we cannot do something with those emotions, we shouldn't encourage them. Another major point, you know, calls to action that actually make sense. You know, we have our work, our research, what's happening. This is happening in the border with Mexico. People are being exploited. You know, it's uh, migrants, etc. Sign now. But if I don't feel a connection with your invitation, I won't sign anything, even if it takes me three minutes, because maybe you have written a, a terrible, heartfelt, long story, and you're telling me that it's going to be solved with one signature. If people don't understand how their participation is significant, they they will, you know, uh, not follow up on the on the cause, and that's part of the the aim of this talk, going from uh, reaction to action. Uh, uh, I mean, signatures might be useful, but I need to understand why the signatures will be useful. If they tell me that with so many signatures we can send them we can, I don't know, vote on this issue or something like that, okay. But if uh, you're telling me that with one signature, we will eliminate uh, Amazon deforestation, it doesn't make sense. And also we need to uh, tell better stories because the, the best way uh, to catch people's uh, attention, this is uh, Hernandez, he's a peasant in Tabasco, Mexico. This uh, production land was flooded in, in uh, salt water because of the uh, um, of the works being done. And let's say half of the people working there left the region, and the other half, led by Rotiro, started to, you know, they couldn't uh, sow uh, maize or beans, and they started to plant manglares and now they have over uh, 350 hectares of these other products 
and of course they can you know um have these these areas that uh, had no hope before um actually and they recovered the, the whole area this story will probably be more important more relevant why it's so important to you know preserve mangroves and they would have provided the person with statistics stories have you know characters a beginning a main uh, body and an end and stories are much more interesting than just hard data now let's uh, have an activity Mm. Can we paste the link so that we can all access the website, please? So, two uh, news, pieces of news, we'll be using Miro, and I will be showing you, I will be showing you this. We're going to use post-its to, uh, you know, uh, write out a strategy. Uh, we're going to select our audience, my objective, and uh, a preferred channel. And then we're going to write the strategy, the message. And we will be sharing our conclusions. Before we start, can you please paste the link uh, in the chat, Irene? Thank you, Irene. Sorry, I don't, I don't have the chat open. OK, scenario one. U.S. elections, we have uh, a science, uh, a candidate that denies science, he's elected the U.S. president, and he's announcing that he's going to hold science collaboration programs, he's going to block food imports, he's going to eliminate environmental protections, she, he suggests um, uh, abandoning international mechanisms, you know, limiting subsidies to education and science. And the president of your country, you know, kind of hints to this, to these new, to this new president's policies. It, this is hypothetical, of course, it would never happen, but it's a hypothetical case. Let's do this as an as an exercise or activity. Let me now switch to Miro. There's 11 people here already. How is Miro used? Here at the top, have a look at the arrow. Uh, uh, we have the hand that uh, enables us to move around. Zoom con esta lupa. So we can zoom in the image, for instance. And we can see here uh, what's happening. Uh, this, don't have a look at the train now. Now we're in exercise one. Okay, so this is a guy that has just been elected US president. Um, you can click on the arrow and you can drag and drop. Um, I'm going to use a blank space and I would like to launch a campaign to get journalists in my country to stop covering these policies. Um, as if they were funny. And I'm going to tell the journalists that from the scientific community, we have a very strong positioning, and I will say this. This is hypothetical, of course. I am a climate change researcher, and I want to, you know, give my opinion with other, together with other colleagues about the how serious all this is. And we will do this on Instagram. You know, this is my path. I take one of these post-its, I'm going to write my response. So what do I do if I want to talk to journalists? I will I will be um, preparing a number of videos, uh, warning about the current president's uh, policies. So the idea is to play around, you know, to see how we would use this, how we would combine what we have been discussing. We can unmute our mics, we can ask questions um, in the chat, but please, please play around with this. You can be more specific, uh, for instance. I don't want this just to be about students or aimed at students. I want to reach uh, biology students, okay? 
So if you want to make any modifications, please go ahead. So how do I do this? I click on the arrow. Please drag your post-its post somewhere and um, design your own version. Algunas dudas que, que I will quedado. also be um, answering some questions in the chat. We have seven minutes for us to put together the, re the answers. Play around. There's no wrong answers. The idea is to, you know, um, do this activity and see what happens. And also we should reflect on this. Um, for, for instance, I don't know what Instagram is like and I'm not sure about it. I think ah, there are many comments about the, the straw and the Spanish word for it, popote or whatever. Um, it actually, I think it's one of the, in Spanish, the one of the words that has the, the highest number of, of variants, straw. Ecuador, sorbete, Panama, carrizo, paquilla, bombilla, etc. Yeah, it's the same thing. Claudia wants to access the, the recording of this seminar. Yes, we will be sending an email to every attendant uh, with the link. Great. Uh, ¿Qué, ¿Qué es lo importante aquí de, de este ejercicio? So, what's important about this activity? Social media work, when we start exploring them, you know, when we start finding other ways to use them. And actually, it's a chance to reinvent uh, ourselves. But if, if you prefer the other exercise, you know, the, the train one, I can also explain the other exercise or scenario so, so that we do both at the same time. The next, uh, the other scenario is the Inca train, so as not to get confused. The Inca train has been announced in this country and, you know, the construction site above uh, the, uh, the largest, uh, underground uh, uh, rivers, it will, uh, you know, cause problems in the jungle, the soil is very fragile, communities will be displaced, also um, um, the mass tourism model will expand and it will affect other areas, energy, soil production, cattle raising, etc. So we need to see how we would how we would go about this issue. Let us have a look at the other section on the panel. Y este lo mismo. Juguemos un poco con con las las los post-its que tenemos por aquí. So let's play around with the post-its that we have here. So let me read some of the of the post-its we already, we already have. Uh, activists and the academia uh, consequences, and they would do this on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, chats and live sessions with open mic conversations. That's great. And I think that the, um, you, you are uh, aiming for activists and the academia, and that's great, actually. Sorry, there's no names. Maybe you can say who wrote this. But I, I think this has held, this has worked well for us. Activists tend to lack the necessary data and argument uh, foundations. And as researchers, you have this. So when you work together, it's, it, it's dynamite, you know, it's a great combination. And many times, as the, there's public funding in the academia, uh, but maybe the um, uh, maybe academicians cannot say some things, but activists can say everything, and they can be much more aggressive, and they can point fingers directly. This is why this is a, a natural alliance, and it's great that you have uh, brought it up. 
also authorities and decision makers warning about a specific topic and they would do this on twitter you, and here they say talk about data i think that that type of exercise to talk about data and authorities works well why because authorities have the direct account you know so you may talk to the the environment minister they would probably be on twitter and you can you know tag them and or whatever and say what this minister is, does not understand is blah 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 and you can create a thread and if you combine that with your uh, article with graphs or whatever then it's going to be uh, more viral um i think um, it's great to work with academicians in order to uh, show the, the content. So students and the university community, yes, activists and NGOs, yes, journalists and local newspapers, yes. Um, they, they will be talking about deforestation and they use Twitter, Instagram and Facebook and also maps and graphic content. In effect, Lo gráfico le va a ganar al texto. There's something key here, you know, the visual uh, trumps uh, text, and that's that's like that. We need to consider that on multi-platforms, when you have an image, it beats the the text because it's easier to read, you know. So maps, geographic representation of data that that is usually very useful uh, here we have nadia <clears throat> someone's asking about an attendance list okay that's a question for Eden. Sí. no no es certificable <laughs> no, puedo mover mi no you cannot get certificates for attending this this workshop Si quieres poner ahí Samantha, go ahead. If you want to include a, a counter proposal, please be my guest. Demos unos cuatro minutos más. Let's wait four more minutes. There's something else I would like to talk to you about. You you shouldn't be social media experts. Okay. Why? There are social media experts, there are platforms that need the content you are, sorry, the research you're already um, conducting. So I would say that if you're thinking about um, an impact strategy because you want to use the information you're producing, and if you want to do this in the short term, it's better that you work with someone who already has a platform that can help you translate the information. No, no because we cannot be experts in everything and we won't achieve that in the short term. So something like who has the figures, who has the audience I want to reach, who already talks to young women with uh, higher education studies, that use social media okay i'm going to talk to her to him so that i can reach that audience and i will i will tell them about sharing information for instance someone is talking about community tourism okay we need to decide who we want this information uh to to reach uh, YouTube and Facebook can be very useful. Um, also, we need to, if we want to have good quality videos, it's we need to decide what to do. Ah, someone wrote TikTok. Oh, TikTok. Okay, okay. TikTok has very nice tools. If you have a smartphone, that's enough. Mm -hmm. Va, pues voy a... Voy volviendo acá.
Pero la intención de este ejercicio era que viéramos este caminito, ¿no? Bueno, well, la idea es to have a look at this path, let's say. Who we are, who we want to talk to. You know, that's the first part. And sometimes we forget that. Ah, there's another one here. Periodistas de la red argentina de periodismo científico. Uh, scientific researchers from Argentina warning about something specific, about the social impact. Uh, when it comes to the U.S. president uh, denying the borders of science. And then also Twitter, uh, Twitter uh, uh, a threat warning about all this. So we will have a double impact because we will be reaching journalists and also uh, multilateral organization leaders. Okay, hashtag La Ciencia Importa or Science Matters. Um, so when we have this more like complex information uh, is better addressed in uh, on Twitter and that's the social media where you find journalists uh, because they use uh, Twitter a lot. I have talked to uh, journal colleague journalists and they look for interaction articles or whatever from the platform. And someone says, uh, if it's wor worth promoting um, uh, Instagram ads, it does, because it's very similar to Facebook in its reach. These are meta platforms. Meta is the, the umbrella organization that includes WhatsApp, Instagram, and Facebook. Everything is included within meta. They have very similar policies and tools when it comes to uh, information dissemination. Okay, I'm gonna switch my screen now, but please click, keep writing your comments. The Maya train, let's talk about that. There was a series of really good videos with people from the University UNAM, and they have 20 different videos showing the impacts. And it, it seems like a good strategy, but what's the issue? Well, perhaps we put in a lot of time. We did everything right, It's and they did everything right. It's really great content. But the issue is that you put a link to a platform that is outside Twitter, so you ha don't have a lot of interaction. Our strategy might be well done, but it might not come through if we don't take into account this, this virality issues. And this happens with these people from academia in Mexico. And if you see, this was from uh, August 18th, and then another one from August 17th. So what happened? Uh, my audience was saturated. Uh, perhaps we want to hear what Dr. Cristina has to say about the impact of climate change. But I don't know if then the next day I want to hear what David B. has to say about this project and then the next day uh, what someone else has to say. So we need to dose our information so that people can digest it and replicate it. And in closing, so instead of putting the YouTube link, they should have uploaded the video. Yes, what these people should have done, instead of putting these capsules with a link to YouTube, even though it's attractive because I have everything in YouTube channel that is people from academia against the Mayan train, but what do you want? Followers for, uh, to your YouTube channel? or do you want people to, to watch that video? So if Twitter gives you the option, I'm gonna go quickly to, to Twitter to show you because Twitter gives you the option. Here I am in Twitter. I'm gonna tweet something and here I can select multimedia. And if I select here, that I want to upload a picture or a video. Uh, I don't know if I have anything ready, but if I upload it, uh, then the video lives in Twitter 
and it, it can show it uh, more easily. Perhaps this is a picture that lives just in Twitter. It's not hosted somewhere else. The videos, Twitter, this is a, a, a video from Greta Thunberg that lives in Twitter. And so if it had been a link to somewhere else, it, a lot less people would watch it. So if these colleagues had shown the, those videos directly in Twitter, they would have had uh, better results. And it's unfortunate because it was hard to make those contents and uh, it was expensive and it took time and all that. So some strategies and some things that we have found useful. Um, an activation workshop. We did this based on information about how the public budget on climate change is being used to build gas infrastructure. And the researcher told us um, that we had the platform, we, we have a, a reduced platform from our research center. So how can we reach more people? If you don't have a network uh, or you have a small network, so instead of saying, oh, we're going to create a few videos and it's this much money. Well, first we did a workshop where you can explain to uh, eco influencers or green influencers that show things like alternatives to disposable products. And so we can tell them and we can tell science uh, communicators and show them and discuss with them how the climate change budget is being used. And so these are people, journalists as well. So these are people working with, they were very honored to be invited and they perhaps have 70,000, 200,000 followers. And in the workshop, well, we show them the information. Well, let's do something together. Let's do, all together for a week content about this the thing that we have learned today. So what happened was that all of these journalists and influencers took the information of a well-meaning researcher, but, but had who had uh, not a lot of, of resources. So they created memes, for example, so when you hear your, your crush saying natural gas is a, a good alternative energy source, then someone else created this in Instagram, this infographic with some of the data. This wasn't done by the researcher. Uh, and the two researchers who, who worked on, on this, Anainel Vázquez and Ibaín Sánez, they didn't have to learn how to edit images. This was done by an influencer who knows how to do this. That is what I mean. If you are not an expert on this, let's find strategies to make this happen. What were the keys to put together the event, to build a synthesis to present the, the new information to report, frame it on an event, the COP27, curate and pick and choose the audience. It, this was for 20 people. And the result was what we reached hundreds of thousands of people. And then we built a cohesion group for follow-up, perhaps a WhatsApp group. Uh, so for example, um, Irene tells us, oh, I shared my video, I already did it. So it, it motivates others to, to follow through with the actions. And so this was an experiment. We, we hadn't done that before and it worked really well for this. So it's something you should try. It's best if it's illustrated. We have a very complex work or we want to bring uh, emotions. And this is a comic uh, created by Santiago Mojao, who is an illustrator on, did something on biodiversity. Uh, this about this very particular special bird who is singing his song, trying to find somebody like him, trying to see if, if somebody answers his call, but he keeps calling and he doesn't know he, he's the last one. So in six pictures, uh, you, you 
you get goosebumps. And we did stickers, we did posters, and it's from the uh, network of crisis illustrators who help translate uh, problems, issues. This is here in the University of Chihuahua. The hills are being lost and because it's deserted, people think that there's no natural value in those. So perhaps this hill to you doesn't say anything, but because I'm from Chihuahua, I, I recognize those three antennas. And to see that hill in my beloved Chihuahua turned into this pieces of broken concrete is really uh, mobilizing to me. And this is an example of, of crossing and, and uh, bringing together people who are from academia and artists. So um, the scientists took a lot of, of time explaining the issues, the species that were lost, while well, this artist created a, a very impactful image so we can reach uh, people in a different way. And finally, mixing audiences. Uh, this is a colleague Carlos Tornello from Durham University in geography. And we co-edited uh, a guide on, on how to reach uh, and bring these conversations to audiences outside of our eco chamber. So we, uh, we joined uh, this uh, girl who has a very popular podcast, the most a uh, famous one in Spanish language, and we submitted this guide to, she's Ash Ashley Frange, and she didn't know pretty much anything about climate change, but that was really cool because she asked us questions uh, like, well, I, I need you to go back and, and explain that. What is Anthropocene? What is uh, man-made climate change? because we don't want to just reach uh, university people who go to university, scientists, as if we were all together in our doctorate studies. So it's really cool to have someone from outside your demographic interview you and to not uh, do content just for ourselves. It, it comes naturally. I want to make content that I would like to read, but I, I don't want just to, to for Paulo to read me. So we need to think of our audience and how we can make our message reach them. And so these kinds of exercises where Carlos and I discussed with Ashley, it made us think of how we want uh, to to discuss this. And, and so, uh, it wasn't for an audience of researchers. They, they can watch it, they can think it's cool, but we wanted to open up the, the conversation. Does the use of hashtags improve visibility for a message? Yes, it does, especially when you have a campaign. For example, the one that I'm going to explain now that I'm going to show you uh, helps focus the content. If you partnered with different colleagues to discuss deforestation in the Amazon. Then Equatorial Amazon is a hashtag. And if I click on that, then I can see any content and anything that has been produced with that hashtag instead of it being spread out in, in different postings. That's what a hashtag is for. And also, if you um, do, if you build a large campaign and you manage to get among the trending topics, then it's going to become news. A lot more people um, are going to discuss that. It, it kind of builds up from there. And adding uh, in Twitter, don't use at uh, someone uh, as the first thing. For example, don't put at Irene something something, because otherwise only Irene and people who follow her are going to see that. You are reducing the, the your audience right away. But if I say, some people say at Irene something something, then I'm going to reach a, a lot more people. 
Something else that we have done in somewhere else is connecting the, the struggles because we have issues with cruise ships, Cozumel is an island in the Caribbean, in Mexico. And La Paz is a city in Baja California. And in both places, they're thinking of building mega ports for, for mega cruise ships. And so we created this campaign to build criticism to this development of mass tourism. We showed a documentary on the issue that is available on YouTube uh, on a 12 year period discussing the problems. And we paid for ads for uh, this thing, this documentary to be advertised in Cozumel and in La Paz. So people were receiving the information on different um, fronts. I go to a web, uh, to Facebook, and I can see information about the uh, biodiversity of oceans and how the cruises affect that. And then by showing the documentary in schools, we also build and, and created volunteers who uh, painted murals, distributed stickers like, like the ones I showed you. And finally, we wanted to break our eco chamber with a campaign that was uh, quite provocative. It was lest bribe the Ministry the, the, uh, of Environment. So why did we say let's bribe uh, this ministry because they are building these uh, ship, these ports um, that go against the laws and regulations. So we we were making this kind of, of mockery of that, and we would we started collecting money to, to pay that bribe uh, to created this infographic on how much money, for example, for 10,000, we can read the environmental impact statement for building the docks and, and you can uh, go up uh, as and we collected about uh, $1,200 uh, and we were able to pay an attorney to file an injunction and we delivered that uh, to the ministry, and we were covered by 12 uh, national uh, TV networks. So we were there in the street with uh, this slogan, and some of us were dressed as sharks, fish, and we handed in that the money that we raised. And after the campaign, they ended up withdrawing the project in La Paz and with the injunction that, that we were able to file, it has stopped uh, or permanently suspended the, the project in Cozumel. Both projects that seemed unstoppable, well, we were able to, to stop them. We were just a part of the protest. But I remember that the first action that we did was a forum with people from academia and journalists, and that they would people in Cozumel who already had some ports um, were telling them people just don't do that it has these are the consequences that it has so we had that online forum between people from these two different regions and it was replicated in a lot of places afterwards and this is it uh, for, for what I had prepared thank you so much for listening for your comments your questions we, we can we see that companies uh, such as Coca-Cola, Unilever, Kimberly Clark can pay to have um, information uh, managed for a, a public that is poorly informed. Well, yes, um, we, we can do this sort of funny or, or mocking campaigns, but we can build partnerships as well because this, our spokesperson would discuss, would, uh, would talk to the press with uh, hard facts, with science-based data. So we need to, to find where we, we have those 
uh, blockages and we can do, be creative with campaigns because these companies building these ports had huge budgets and they had all of the money but why did it work because we broke our, our eco chambers we didn't just talk to environmentalists and our colleagues but we brought that to a wider audience and that that is something that social media is very important to here you have my contact if you want to um, send your comments questions at c climaticas and uh, climaticas.org uh, the website and it's been a pleasure hopefully you have enjoyed yourselves as much as i have and thank you so much it's been great to, to share all of this with you. It's scientific um, communication is very important right now. So find a way to, to be present. If it's not your way to be stuck to your cell phone all day, which I find healthy and it's great, uh, but uh, find a way to make science present in social media. Thank you so much, Paolo. It's been great. We have, we've had lots of interactions. We have your email if we have more questions afterwards, of course, and hopefully this will help the, the work of the IAI on our research on, on global change and to help us reach a wider audience with science-based data, which as, as you were saying is something that is very necessary. So we also need to commit even if you're not um, as sure, uh, we need to, to use social media to disseminate that information. So thank you for everyone who was here today, to our interpreters. And we will be in touch, in, uh, stay in touch in 2023. Thank you, thank you so much.